Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the long-awaited disassembly of the engine. It's been sitting for over eight years. It was pickled, uh, or fogged. Um, well, let's find out if there's rust or what the condition's in. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Well, welcome back to the hangar. Um, I'm back here again for the next day. This time, I am going to be working on the engine. So I've cleaned up uh, a lot of stuff around the engine. Follow me while I turn you around and make you dizzy. Oh, and, and before I do that, um, at the very beginning of this video, I'm going to say, hit the like button, and right down there, right down there. And um, uh, make a comment, say hello from wherever you are, and um, subscribe if you feel like you like what you're seeing. So, um, now that I've finished the uh, obligatory message from the um, network yeah the network <laughs> um, let's spin you around hopefully not making you dizzy Whoop! okay there's the engine um, and I have the tool to remove the flywheel now I, ha I had the tool for the fan removal already but I'm going to be uh, taking it apart but as I'm taking it apart I started already <laughs> Uh, kind of cleaning things up a bit, and I noticed something, and I thought, oh, I wonder if this has been affecting the engine's performance. Here's the uh, oil injection pump for the uh, for the oil, and of course these are the two hoses that go out to the each cylinder. And at the bottom here, this is where on the uh, uh, starter side, the oil gets injected into the stream of fuel, and here it is on this side, right there. But I noticed, if you look, I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me see, I'm going to turn the display on here. Uh, let's get you a little closer. It's pinched. That f oil line is just about completely restricted. It's pinched um, between the uh, engine block and this coil. What the? Uh, oh, not good. Not good at all. Um, when I took the carburetors off, and let me just pull this paper out here. When I took the carburetors off, I did notice that there was the blue oil kind of dripping from the bottom of these. So I am. I'm really hoping that enough oil got through while the engine was running. Again, the engine only has 130 hours on it. But that's the first thing I noticed was that pinched oil line. Not good. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put this camera on a tripod and um, we'll get to the disassembly and we will discover what happened with that pinched oil line together. Let's hope nothing. Let's hope there was just enough oil getting through that it it didn't affect it. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Thanks for following along. Appreciate it. Um, it's, um, as Mike Patey says, and I'm using this, I'm stealing it from Mike Patey. Back to work. And this is where I get to speed things up because, well, this is a three and a half hours of recorded video trying to trim it down to under 20 minutes. So I'm taking off the intake manifolds and looking inside the piston and then I go and start taking off the uh, other intake manifold on the um, PTO side and I notice something, oh, well, <laughs> something really bad. That uh, oil tube is jammed in there good. It uh, doesn't want to come out uh, without some force. That's not good. Okay, I'm going to take the ignition coils off then. Yeah, not good. Well, boys and girls, that If any oil got through, if any oil got through, I would be absolutely amazed. 
Yeah, well. Okay, so yeah, that's just wow. Okay, what does that mean for the engine? Yeah, that's quite the um, thing to find, an oil line pinched from the oil injection. As it turns out, it looks like oil did get through. It was restricted, but um, you'll discover, as I do, uh, that there was, there was no damages from that. There was no overheating. Oil did manage to get through, but oh my word, <laughs> it was very, very <laughs> lucky that uh, that oil did manage to get through that hose. So... Uh, uh, yeah, now I'm uh, I'm putting the um, extractor onto this tool that uh, that I uh, rented, and um, I'm going to be well using a, a wrench to uh, pop this uh, this uh, uh, flywheel off, which of course has the magnets inside of it, which is part of your stator, which is part of the charging circuit and the ignition circuit for the engine, and uh, uh, it takes a like one quick smack and there she goes off it came off really it was on there tight but it did come off quite nicely and um, clean inside except for bugs yes there was bugs inside of it and uh, uh, there you go uh, excellent tool very expensive glad I could rent it now I'm leaving the the uh, engine plate on uh, until I get most of this off because it, it's a stable platform. Okay. Right. I'll be right back. Okay, and in this part, I am removing the um, the charging circuit, uh, the coils that are mounted back there, and um, I have to remove all that so I can remove the uh, that front well piece that holds the cooling fan and all that. Um, so yeah, so the assembly continues. Uh, I notice that the wiring harness does not pull apart entirely, so you can't remove um, the uh, uh, the elect uh, electrics without cracking the case open. I'm kind of curious why about that. There's only two wires that aren't plugged. Um, curious. Uh, was it a mistake? Uh, was this a modification or something? I don't know. Again, something I'll be asking the uh, the Rotax experts about. Um, and uh, so, yeah. At this point, of course, I had to get uh, some uh, bigger Allen wrenches because, um, yeah, those nuts were tight. So... Um, hopefully you're following along and haven't fallen asleep yet um, <laughs> and learning something about your Rotax engine if you've got to do the same. And it was back to normal speed. I'll be back to you in a second. Well, let's take a close look here. Okay, there's um, um, grease residue along here. Um, I don't know if that's leaking from the cylinder while the engine was running. It does have some oils here at the top. You can see some staining. Uh, it's possible that the seal was leaking then. By the looks of it, it was dripping down. So, okay. And we are getting close to the great big reveal. I'm uh, now taking the nuts off the uh, the cylinder heads. Going to pull those off, check the condition of the uh, top of the pistons and the top of the cylinder heads, and, well, 
we'll see what uh, what they look like. Stay tuned. This is getting exciting, boys and girls. Kind of wet, which is good. There was fogging compound in there. Um, yeah, that's the condition of that cylinder. Set that aside. And yeah, and there's carboning on there, obviously. Um, but overall, I'm not too disappointed. Let me change this angle here. Okay. Now, Pull this one off. Very similar condition. Some carbon build up there, but overall not too bad. Top of the piston looks good. I'm in frame. We'll give this a shot. If you can see in there, I don't know, nice crosshatch pattern, no scoring, no scratches, no signs of overheating on this one either. Mind you, this is the one that had the, the good oil. Let's take a look at this one. And this one as well, looks like it's uh, not much to worry about. Both exactly the same. And I'm going to take detailed pictures and I'm going to send them into the Rotax Service Center. I'm going to ask them for their opinion. And as far as the pistons are concerned, well, They are coated in oil, and that's that uh, fogging oil. There's a lot of it on there. Well, that's good. Rings are nice and loose on both. Yes, yeah, very loose. No binding anywhere. And now for the bearings. Stay tuned. Okay, I'm feeling for any sign of a lump bump spot or a sound, the inner bearings are good. The only bearing I'm concerned about kind of rattles a little bit. Makes any noise at all. Is this PTO bearing? The outer bearing on the PTO side. The rest of the bearings are buttery smooth. Quiet. No lumps, no bumps, no nothing. Okay, now. No excess of play. I 
think that's all right. Okay, um, I'm just going to clean up and uh, pack up. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too boring watching me disassemble. But I had to do this. I had to find out what's inside the engine. And uh, if some of you know what the, this blackening at the bottom of the pistons, if anybody of you uh, out there have worked with these Rotax engines, I have not. I've worked with other engines, all four strokes. Actually, I have worked with two-stroke engines, but not to this degree of tearing them down. I've rebuilt engines. Well, okay, V8s, mostly Chevy 350s uh, for the racetrack. Um, been doing that forever. And I've also rebuilt motorcycle engines for the racetrack, um, you know, from the ground up. And I don't recall seeing a lot of this carboning at the bottom of a piston like that. Um, I could be natural for this engine. If you know for a fact, leave it in the comments that you've seen it before and, uh, and you know, um, if you're guessing, well, let me know that you're guessing, okay? <laughs> but ultimately, um, don't take offense, but I am going to uh, talk to an expert, uh, a fellow who's been at this for forever. Um, and uh, he's the fellow that sent me the tool to d disassemble. They rent the tools out. So um, um, I'm going to speak to him about it and, um, and see what his recommendation is. And um, he's a, he's a long-time, well-respected Rotex and uh, uh, mechanic and um, shop owner, and he's kind of like the go-to guy for a lot of people in Rotex. He's based out of Vancouver, British. Actually, not Vancouver. I think he's in Surrey, BC, or is it Langley? I know it's in British Columbia. So uh, I will be speaking to him and um, find out what he has to say, what his recommendation is. So that's it for today. Thanks again for following along uh, in the boring disassembly of the engine and the discovery of what's wrong, if anything. Um, that oil hose was bad. Okay, got to go. Bye-bye. And with a knock on the hangar door, I kind of rushed out without saying, keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> and thanks for watching me work here in the hangar. Alrighty, thanks again. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, thanks for watching.